This program is dedicated to those that paid for their lives at the hands of the state. Michigan Studios of WKTV. Let's go inside for Silent Voices. Hello and welcome to another segment of Silent Voices. I'm your host Dennis Lawrence and today we have a special guest from the Kalamazoo area, Deborah Wagner. She has come here to share her story, uh, a grandmother that lost her granddaughter and it's uh, really not a story. After I read it, uh, it was more like a nightmare, something I haven't heard of <laughs> before. So we'll get started on that, Debbie. And um, tell me, what, what happened here? What, how did this all start? Well, in October or 2007, my daughter was diagnosed with cancer. Um, she and my granddaughter lived with me and my husband and my son, Kyle, in Michigan. Um, I had the Lisa and David Miller who would continuously call me and ask to if they could help me, if there's anything they could do to help me with. And the only thing they said they could do to help me was um, babysit my granddaughter. They lived in Ohio. Okay, um, um, what, what relationship were the Millers to you? Uh, how, how did you come about to knowing them? Um, my daughter was married to David Miller in 2007, or 2004, they were divorced, I believe. They shared a son, Dylan, um, and David and his new wife, Lisa, but they were married shortly after my daughter's divorce to David. Um, they had custody of my grandson, Dylan, which is Olivia's half-brother. Um, my granddaughter's not related to the Millers in any way. So that was your daughter's uh, son, or son from a uh, she had a son. previous Miller right. marriage to the Miller family, and um, they had custody. How did they go about getting custody of this boy? Dylan, they had, um, my daughter had been sick for quite a while. She'd been sick for several years. We didn't know what was wrong with her, but she had gone to the emergency room quite a few times and been to um, several doctors. Um, Lisa is a nurse, somehow got into my daughter's medical records and had them subpoenaed to court. Um, the court accused her of being a drug seeker. A drug seeker. So that's how they obtained custody of Dylan from my daughter. Now, did she uh, live in Ohio when they did this, or? No, she lived in she, Michigan. She lived in Michigan. So was it the uh, Michigan, Michigan court or the Ohio court that, uh, that had was, jurisdiction on this? Um, Michigan sh should have had jurisdiction, um, but Ohio court um, took him away. And Dylan was actually a resident of Michigan when yes. this happened, and Ohio court decided and yes. took the boy away. Yes, he was on a visit with his dad, um, and they had gone to court and got an emergency motion to. Um, they got an emergency motion for custody without my daughter knowing about it. When she went to pick him up, they didn't tell her what they had done and she had not been notified by the court yet. So she was actually arrested for kidnapping when she went to Ohio to pick her son up. So basically they pretty much changed jurisdiction by having the boy go down there on a visit then. Yeah. And then 
you have this, she had this daughter, Olivia, and um, she was sick with cancer. Yes, Olivia was and three. She was three years old. Um, how, how did the Millers go about, how did Olivia go about going to Ohio with the Millers? Well, after my daughter became ill, the Millers came to Michigan to see her. They called. Um, they apologized for everything they had done to her. And Dylan, they made, it, they made amends. I thought, my daughter even thought this was the reason for her death, that um, peace. And the Millers, um, they called me quite often. They called every day, you know, asking if there's anything they could do. They'd only made one trip to Michigan, and that was the first time they met Olivia. They they seen her for about an hour, um, and everything seemed they they seemed really nice. They seemed like they had changed, and they were sorry for everything they had done. So. Um, so, so basically, they they. Um with her cancer and death coming on, they were being nice and um, very, mm -hmm. very sorry and all this. Now, was Olivia related to the Millers or was she fathered by a different father than? She had a different father. My daughter never married the father. So there wasn't no relation at all? None. There. In fact, uh, the birth certificate of Olivia's States no father right. on there. So how long had they uh, known her, basically? I mean, uh, they had only met her that one time just for an that hour. One time, mm -hmm. and then they wanted to take her to Ohio, uh, right, to help out. My daughter had gone into a coma, and she, um, we admitted her to um, Allegiance Hospice Home. And uh, the Millers continued to call me. She was there for, I think, three days um, at the time Olivia left. She was admitted on, I believe, October 14th. On October 16th, the Millers, the last time they called for Olivia, I agreed, even without discussing it with my husband and the rest of my family, who would have talked me out of it. I agreed to let them take her because I thought maybe it would be good for her not to watch her mother die, which was a mistake. But um, you were just over overburdened at the time. Well, I wasn't overburdened with Olivia. I was just—I just thought maybe it would be good for her just to get away, and. So on the next day, on October 17th, the Miller showed up to pick her up about 6 o'clock in the evening. And I had um, my husband rush and put some clothes together for her. And he put some clothes in a basket. Uh, my sister-in-law um, was also there. And she had brought up some clothes um, in the trunk of her car that she had brought up for Olivia. They were her daughter's clothes. And, and I think she sent those clothes also, um, which was mentioned in, in, the, in the trial that I had sent enough clothes for a lifetime. I didn't even know what, what was in those boxes. But um, so the Millers took her on October 17th. OK. Uh. Did 2008. You did you discuss to her, uh, to the Millers, about uh, when you was going to pick up Olivia or how long she was going to be staying? Well, we didn't have a date. Um, I thought it would probably be at least a week. I knew that my daughter wouldn't be able to hold on much longer. Did the Millers say anything? Well, just, you know, that's all right. You just they said, it's fine. Just come pick her up when you're ready. Right. I so had no indication they were going to no do what they did. no indication they were going to do what they were about to do. None. None. When was the next time you seen Olivia and 
Actually, when did you learn that the Millers had custody of Olivia? I didn't learn it till probably until um, I started realizing several days after my daughter's my daughter passed away that something was wrong because they stopped letting me talk to Olivia on the phone and Dylan. Um, little things started happening that just didn't seem right. I, I, I had made a decision, me and my husband, that we just wanted to go get Olivia before, before we even planned my daughter's memorial because we just wanted her home. And I called, I called um, and they said they wouldn't be letting her come back to Michigan, that they had gotten custody. My daughter passed away. The Millers took her on the 17th. My daughter passed away on the 19th, two days later. On the 20th, which these papers stamped October 20th, 2008, the Millers had custody of my granddaughter. So in three days, after taking her in three days, they had custody. Yes. The morning after my daughter's death, they had custody. They had temporary custody. Um, on the 20th, on the 21st, they had permanent custody. That was awful fast. Um, yes, it was. My daughter's death certificate wasn't even issued yet. Um, it was issued and stamped October 23rd, 2008. Their custody application is October 20th, 2008. And it was decided the very next day, without any input from relatives or family. Right. So you, now you, you went down to, uh, you did some a lot of court business on this, didn't you? Yes. My daughter, the day after my daughter's memorial, I went to Ohio and I filed uh, an emergency motion to get her back. And I was denied the motion. Um, a pre-trial was set for um, December, and it took me until December to be able to see my granddaughter. I had to get a court order to see her at the pre-trial, and it was set that I would have interim visits with her, so every other weekend, or every other week, I would get Olivia. So for two years, we drove to Ohio every Sunday. We drove to Ohio and back, either to pick her up from Ohio or to return her to the Miller's house. And I was ordered to make that trip. What stops me is how Ohio got this case when this was a resident, Olivia was a resident of Michigan. I have and no I idea. Um, I have the custody application, which is blank of all addresses the child lived at previously. The only address that they give is for my daughter, and it was an old address of mine. And I, had, I had looked that over, and everything's blank in there. Yes. Half of that isn't even filled out. Nope. Now, Some of it says is there unknown. any lies in there? Did they say this was their granddaughter? Or? Um, no. What, what basis did they have to get this child? The biological father evidently had set this up with them. They, they contacted um, the biological father, David Poplin, who also w helped the Millers in getting custody of Dylan. Now the court contacted him? No, he or went to the courthouse he with them the, court the day with them. after my daughter's death. And basically, he sold her in exchange for not having to pay child support. Now, this is their son, right? The Miller's son? No, this or, is my granddaughter. Oh, this is, oh, Mr. Potman's at? David Poplin is, Poplin is Olivia's biological father. David Miller is Dylan's biological father. So, what you're saying, the father of Olivia went to court? Yes. But he didn't know her. He had he had only met her once when she was a baby. He had never known her. He wasn't on the birth certificate. There's no father on the birth There's certificate. There's no father on the birth certificate. And 
And yet um, they took his testimony in court. All he had was paternity. Paternity was... Um, paternity was established? Was paternity was established in Ohio when in my, Ohio. my granddaughter was born, which my daughter had already been living in Michigan, but she still had an apartment in Ohio. And her obstetrician was in Ohio. So I stayed in Ohio with her until she gave birth. And then we had had her apartment packed up and um, everything was in storage and she moved to Michigan. It almost sounds to me like Olivia had reverted. Uh, uh, somehow the father had the more rights than the grandparents who raised him, even though raised her, even though uh, he wasn't never on the birth certificate. Where is that birth certificate issued from? The birth certificate is issued from Butler County, Ohio. Um, the court case is in Warren County, Ohio. So Warren County didn't have jurisdiction, even if, even if Ohio was the state, it was in the wrong county. It should have been. Butler County, Ohio, where my granddaughter was born. And that's where child support was set up. Um, also, what I know now is David Poplin never paid child support until a few months before my daughter passed away. Um, child support started coming. Now I know that Lisa Miller was paying that child support for him so he would have I guess looked better in the eyes of the court when he gave her away. What a shocking story. Um, now, how was paternity established on David Poplin? Um, I, don't ha I don't know if I have those papers with me, but when, I think a week after my granddaughter was born, um, she she asked for a paternity test or he asked for a paternity test because excuse me he didn't believe that this was his child so he asked for a paternity test and it was done in um, Butler County Ohio did somebody accuse him of being the child or the child's father or well my daughter had told him that he was even though she wasn't with him he was very I abusive. I don't know what he had to worry about if he wasn't on the birth certificate. Um, so basically, he sold this uh, child to the Millers. Uh, evidently, the judge looked that he had more rights than you had as a grandparent. Yes. Um, I just received in the mail today papers today where the Millers stated they did no longer need his um, child support, so they, um, he's asking for his child support to be stopped, but he hasn't paid his child support. They've been paying it for him. Um, there was a trial in March of 2008 under um, Magistrate Lisa Richardson, who is the same magistrate that gave the Millers custody of Olivia. Um, I won the trial, and the Millers had no rights to see her. They had... Um, Where did this trial take place? Did it take place in Ohio? Warren County, Ohio. Warren, Warren County, Ohio. Where they had gotten custody. Yeah, what court was that through? That was through Warren County Juvenile uh, Division. Juvenile Division. Okay, so you won that. Uh, they sided with you, and what, what did they say the reason was to side with you? That if the Millers had um, been honest, that they never would have given them custody in the first place because they admitted in court that they had only known her for two days prior to getting custody of her. Um, but in the beginning, they made the court believe that she had been with them for a long time before my daughter passed away. And then the Millers appealed that. They appealed. And Did they from appeal to a higher court? No. Or the same court? It should have gone to the appellate court when they appealed, but it didn't. They, it stayed in the lower court, and 
we had, they asked for a deposition because we had lost our home. My husband had been laid off from work um, for quite a few months. And we had a very high house payment. So the, the um, judge, without, without having a hearing at all, um, threw the deposition out because I had said in court this, this um, the traveling that we were having to do, it's almost a 600 mile round trip. Oh yeah. Every Sunday between that and the, and the court cost and the um, attorneys, you know, I had hired, also paid an attorney in Michigan who gave me some really bad advice. That's why I never filed in Michigan because um, I didn't know anything about jurisdiction at the time. Nobody had ever mentioned jurisdiction to me. I didn't know there were jurisdiction laws until after the trial was over. So they had won the appeal on that. They won the appeal with... Based on the fact that you folks had lost your home due to unemployment. Right, but without any proof. We, we, had, we weren't homeless, we had a place to live. Um, we had a nice place to live, but there, were, there was never a hearing for me to prove anything. There were assumptions that um, we had gotten welfare or something, which we have never gotten welfare. We've never gotten food stamps or anything like that. And um, that's kind of what the guardian had lied and Lightum Jeffrey Richards was insinuating, I believe, to the judge, is that we couldn't afford to take care of Olivia. So and she, she even uh, received a guardian ad litem in the studio. A very dirty guardian ad litem. Uh -huh. Was uh, or a very child lazy protective one. services at all involved in this? Or there Never. was no investigation on these people's home or how they happened to get this child? I, Almost sounds to me if I wanted a child, I just go to Ohio and file for one if you I can get. Go to Warren County day. and take in some child's birth certificate. And well, I'll write that down. Pretty much um, get anything you want, I guess. Um, there was no background check in Michigan. I believe it's it's mandatory that somebody going for custody of a child have a background check. There were criminal charges with David Miller with theft of morphine. Um, when he worked in the fire department in Lebanon, Ohio, which is also in Warren County. He stole the morphine, injected it into his arm at work, and basically received 28 days of rehab and intervention in lieu of conviction. Mm -hmm. That was in 2005. Let me ask you this. On, on uh, custody papers, uh, was there... Did the father had signed off rights to Olivia? To the, the he custody? signed off rights to the Millers. To the Millers. Um, on the 20th of October, the day after my daughter passed away. So basically, this was all a plan in, in the works. It was definitely uh, planned. Because uh, one thing in Michigan, uh, uh, you can sign off rights to a child, to somebody. Here in Michigan, you have to be related by the fifth degree. Evidently, he's not related to the Millers. No. Uh, it could be different in, o in Ohio. So that's really what happened here, was they stole your granddaughter. They had this all worked out just so he could get away from paying any child support. Yes, and on that day um, that the Millers in the hearing were granted custody, they asked to claim her for the year of 2008 on their tax returns, and they were granted that right. Never, ever mentioned that I'm the person who took care of her, that I'm, my husband and I are the people who have helped raise her since she was born. Well, how long did they, uh, how long in that year did you have them, have Olivia? Well, they had lived with us for um, a year. When she was born, they lived with us. Um, so the year she was taken, actually, she lived with you until almost the middle year. of October. Yes. 
So actually the IRS should have honored you, but they went beyond that and got a court order where they could claim her. All right. I just went back and amended, amended my 2008 taxes to claim her and sent them a letter along with the transcripts where they admit not knowing her prior to October 17, 2008. Good, good for you. Are you still working on this? I mean, there's got to be We are way, still working so. on this. Um, we, we went, I got a new attorney who came in and said, wait a minute, according to the UCCJEA, Ohio didn't have jurisdiction to give this child even if the father lived in Ohio, she had no connection to him. She never went to Ohio to visit him. He never came to Michigan to visit her. There's not one court paper where he tried to see her. And um, so in his brief, we were on our way to the appellate court at that time. So in his brief, he argued that Ohio didn't have jurisdiction according to the UCCJEA. And the appellate court sent it back down to the lower court to determine jurisdiction. That's when a brand new story was born. Now, under Magistrate Burns in Warren County, Ohio, he says that my daughter sent Olivia to Ohio to live months before my um, months before she passed away and that she planned for the Millers to raise Olivia when I had testimony after testimony of people who said they knew that my daughter wanted us to raise Olivia. So they're making up another they story. They made up a brand new story without a fact in it. And according to them, um, that gave Ohio jurisdiction. Looks to me like this might have to almost make it to the Supreme Court for a decision on this uh, jurisdiction. I think you're going to have to try to get it back into Michigan. That's what I want to do. Get That's a fair hearing, but a new hearing. But then the problem might be they might say, well, she spent too much time with the Millers now because she's right. been with them for two years. Well, no, she's lived in yeah. Michigan half the time, up until school started in August. That's when now I got her every other weekend and um, every other holiday. So you still maintain contact then? Yes, definitely. We still drive to Ohio every other weekend now to, to get her. Um, it was a mistake on my part not to go to a Michigan court I didn't know any. I didn't know any better, and the attorneys I was talking to here were asking for five and ten thousand dollar retainer fee. Yes, they are expensive. Well, I sure hope you can get this straightened out, Debbie. And it's been nice to have you on the show today. And I, I did want to add that the Millers receive Social Security for both of these children. Both of them. They receive yes, eight hundred and eighteen dollars per child. All right. Well, thank you. Thank Debbie. you, Dennis. Thank you. And I want you all to join us next week for another segment of Silent Voices. Remember, your voice makes the difference. Thank you.